Yes, everybody, we're doing yet another giveaway. Today, it is 100 XRP that we are giving away, and all that you have to do is make sure you press the like button, make sure you are subscribed with the notification bell on, and make sure, make sure, make sure you comment down below what your favorite crypto is, and that comment is also your entry ticket. And now all you need is to make sure that we hit a 1,000 likes within 24 hours, and then we are giving it away. Today, guys has been a pretty big day. Now, we very often on the channel talk about the possibility of XRP getting to its true value or as a world reserve currency or the US dollar falling and some other currency taking over like the golden standard or things like that. But actually today, Brad Gollinghouse talked about this subject too, which is something that I really, really enjoy. He said in his first tweet, Thread on this US dollar as the world's reserve currency has been the backbone of global financial infra infrastructure. But basically, I went on to check out the article that they linked, at least Bloomberg linked here, and it's actually a very, very cool article. It explains why there's inefficiencies in euro, gold, yen, and some other currencies that would be able to replace the dollar. Now, before we get actually into that, I must explain to you guys a little bit about what a world reserve currency is and what it kind of is based upon. Standing on its own as the world's reserve currency. As a result of Bretton Woods' agreement, the US dollar was officially crowned the world's reserve currency, backed by the world's largest gold reserves. Instead of gold reserves, other countries accumulated reserves of the US dollar, needing a place to store their dollars. Countries began buying US treasury securities, which they considered to be safe store of money, which is actually a very important quote for later. What is a reserve currency, though? A reserve currency is a large quantity of currency maintained by central banks and other major financial institutions to prepare for investment, transactions, and international debt obligations or to influence their domestic exchange rate. A large percentage of commodities such as gold and oil are priced in the reserve currency, causing other countries to hold this currency to pay for these goods. So you guys get it hopefully by, by saying that already. And at the top here, you can see how the US dollar became the world's reserve currency. You can read into this a little bit further. But the key takeaways are, the first US dollar as it known today was printed in 1914 upon the creation of the Federal Reserve Bank. Less than six decades later, decades later, the dollar officially became the world's reserve currency. However, its ascendancy to become or to the throne began not long after the ink was dry on the first printing. The first U.S. dollar, as is known today, was printed in 1914 upon the creation of the Federal uh, Reserve Bank. During WW2, the U.S. supplied the Allies and got paid in gold, propelling the U.S. to the largest holder of gold. And after the uh, countries linked their currency to the dollar, which was linked to gold. The gold standard ended, but the dollar's reserve status was remained. Today, more than 61% of all foreign bank reserves are denominated in US dollars, and nearly 40% of world's debt is in dollars. Now, knowing a little bit of that, there's also an important part in looking at the history of it all, and the chart I often like to use is this one here, or actually the infographic, um, because it can clearly show you exactly what currency was when. There's a couple of other ones which you can easily use, but cool to see that the Netherlands had its own little period of prosperity, of course, but I guess another cool thing to note here is that the average looking at 80, 110, 80, 95, 105, 100, and, uh, actually 100 period is about 95, I'm going to say, by just looking at this. It could be that it's 90. I'm going to say it's 95 by looking at this. If you deduct these two, yeah, I'm going to say, let's say it's 95, right? Years that a world reserve currency stays the same. Because, I mean, the first one starting at about 1450, um, to 1530 was 80 years, then 110, so forth and so on. Right now, America has been the world reserve currency since about 1920. And again, we can kind of debate on whether or not that's the exact number, but let's say it's 1920. Now, at this point, it's been exactly 110 years. Now, what that tells me is that there's a good chance that between now and 10 years, which is the longest period ever that Spain had in 1530 to 1640, this reserve currency is going to be changing again. And a lot of people are wondering exactly what is going to be coming, right? Is it going to be Bitcoin? Is it going to be XRP? Is it going to be some other gold thing, maybe? You know, maybe not a, you know, official currency anymore, but really just a, a golden thing. There's a lot of different opportunities, a lot of different things that, um, you know, could be placed here. 
But the article over on Bloomberg explained a couple of the, the prosperity or actually the good parts about gold and some other currencies and the bad parts. Now for gold, I guess one of the positive things out there is that it's scarce, right? There's a certain amount of gold out there and they can't mess around with it. The bad part about it is, well, if they want to do some, you know, some some government influence, they want to control the money supply to some changes in AD, I have a good demand, they can't really do that, which is a very, very bad part. And of course, next to all of it, it's not that practical to be moving around. If you want to move billions of dollars in debt, it's going to be pretty annoying to move, you know, gold, I don't even know, gold trucks or something like that. For the Japanese yen, uh, it's ranked among the top reserve currencies out there. But the con is that um, oh, they have some massive asset purchases. And you just got to quickly scroll through this here to, I guess, understand everything that's going on. Same for the euro. From its birth, it has been at the dawn of the millennium. The euro inherited the Deutsche Bank's position. It's a key rival to the dollar, standing on its own, yada, yada, yada. But it's still recovering from a near-death experience and so forward. And so basically, they have a different pro and con for almost any currency. Uh, and here is the one for cryptocurrency. Pros. Like gold, cryptos aren't fiat currencies, so there's no government with the power to print them. Unlike gold, there's no need for physical storage, electronic transfer are easy, and encryption offers relative anonymity. The con to it is cryptos have proliferated into a myriad coins of coins and permutations of those coins created by splits and forks, meaning that relatively few are being widely adopted as a means of exchange. The best known Bitcoin has been particularly volatile. It spiked to almost 20,000 in late 2017, only to plummet just above $3,000 about a year later, undermining digital currencies claims to being a reliable store of value. Crypto's role in criminal e uh, enterprise, where it's prized for the anonymity of its or that it offers, has hurt its reputation, so have a so have hacking incidents that cost investors to digital fortune. Now, the last two ones here, so criminals and hackings, I'm going to call them stupid. Hacking incidents cost investors digital fortunes. I mean, there's been, I'm going to say, you know, 10,000 times more hackings that did not have to do with Bitcoin than that have to do with Bitcoin. And most likely, let's say at least 100,000 times more money has been stolen non-related to Bitcoin than related to Bitcoin. Because, I mean... Of all these hackings, it's not really often that they use Bitcoin, just so you guys understand that one. But again, we can all understand exactly why people are, are kind of hesitant to talk about crypto or to use crypto. But basically, the biggest point they made here is that there's a lot of crypto and that it's not really um, a good store of value. However, again, that's to be debated. Now, once we read the article, we can check into what Bradley Guy House has been saying. Thread on this US dollar as the world's reserve currency has been the backbone of global financial infra. And that position isn't going to disappear in favor of gold slash yuan slash crypto or any other asset anytime soon. But is it weaker today? And he said, yes. A year ago, many decried crypto as a scam. And now a majority of the governments are looking seriously at blockchain. It addresses frictions, i.e. settlement transparency, etc. That was assumed or that were assumed very hard to solve before. Crypto is up 80% while the US dollar is down 3% year to date. As fun as fun trust said, it comes down to the trust in the financial system at the end of the day. As global populations continue to lose confidence in fiat currencies, as we're seeing with US dollar, they would choose to diversify our future global financial system will do the same. And thus, basically, he's opening up a little bit to all the statements that we've been making. And now, a lot of you guys, whenever I'm talking about, you know, uh, I guess these these Federal Reserve and the banks and all of that working with XRP, a lot of you guys said, hey, man, look at all the World Banks' content. And now, this is on blogs.worldbank.org. And I've noticed that very often do they talk about remittances, of course, and also very often do they mention a little bit of the things I've been talking about surrounding G20, G7, and also, do they mention Ripple? Now, I don't know if they mention Ripple on this page right here. Yes, they do. Solutions are being actively tested in the market. In 2018, Ripple, a fintech company, piloted XRapid, yada, yada, yada. We know what XRapid does. We know what Ripple does. And basically, it's on the World Bank website, right? It's on there, guys. It's no joke. They're on there right here. Then, in the worldbank.org document, right? If you check at the top here to see what it is all about, Blockchain 
Opportunities for private enterprises in emerging markets, second and expanded edition, January 2019, by the IFC International Finance Corporation, World Bank Group, creating markets, creating opportunities. Now, of course, this one is about blockchain, but Ripple is mentioned in this one six times. Just check it out here. You can see all the mentions. It's pretty obvious. Nothing crazy, but it's mentioned in there multiple times. Here's number two. You can see exactly how it would work. Um, exactly the system we've explained very often. Then number three, let's see here, another one, another system just like that. Then here, uh, let's see, but into it. Despite the highly publicized departures by Goldman Sachs and Santander 2016, which reportedly were due to governmental conflicts, Cordes underlying protocol is technically more of a messaging protocol. Ripple, which offers blockchain-like technology and network for faster settlement of international payments, has more than 75 banking clients globally, in addition to blah, 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 you guys get it. Then further on, another one, Abra and Ripple in the United States yada 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 so on so forward pretty damn huge guys pretty damn huge we all know it's working and last but not least the reference of course in this bottom section i'm interested that they did not ever mention ripple.com or anything like that they just said ripple and swift slug it out over cross-border payments is what they mentioned yeah pretty interesting to me guys pretty damn interesting to me all right having said that though uh, there's multiple places where i've been seeing the connection uh, being formed right now it's, it's been huge and also the digital asset investor posted earlier and by the way guys uh here is just another example of every time i do these these giveaways you know most people don't respond ever you know so here is just the the one that or at least one of the guys that won yesterday in a video uh you can see how it went here and i don't know if it was really this guy maybe he just stole somebody else's twitter i mean i normally check it but i was too lazy today to do so uh, but if it was not you who won i'm sorry bro he was first <laughs> but yeah he won uh send him the money ask him to confirm but he's not doing that and that's actually something that happens very often which is might be why you don't really see it too often i just ignore it and keep it going but yeah you could just check the message out yourself just check the transaction i sent it i, I don't i don't mess around with that stuff uh but but it's it's something that happens guys I, I, I'm, I'm going to say that only three people as of yet, out of so many times of doing it, have ever said thank you, and that's one thing, or even responded to my text after sending them the money, which is pretty interesting, uh, seeing that they sometimes write me whole freaking books before I sent them the money, so I don't know really what happens once I've done it, you know, maybe they're like, alright, screw this guy, block, or I don't know, but would you do the same, would you ignore me if after I send you some money, it's pretty strange, right? It's pretty damn strange. When I won a giveaway a couple years ago, I was, I, man, I was praising this man to, to, the, to the moon. You know, my Twitter was filled <laughs> thanking this guy, which is really, really funny. But all right. They're starting to sell it by the digital asset investor. The real story about getting rich investing in gold, crypto, and IPOs. Now, what I'm going to say here is that getting rich with crypto is going to be a, a, a almost certainty. Right. And the reason I'm saying that is because we all know right now at this point that if XRP really goes to its true value or really goes somewhere at a, a value where it belongs, at least I'm going to say belongs there, there's almost a guarantee to become a millionaire, you know, because you only need 100 XRP at $10,000 per coin to become a millionaire. This is almost a certainty. If you don't have 100 XRP, you're doing something very, very wrong. I'm going to put it out right now, but that's why we're giving away 100 XRP today and make somebody a millionaire because that's how we do. But yeah the real thing is even if we don't get to ten thousand dollars per coin we're all almost almost all we're certain that we'll get to all-time high right if you're not certain about that then maybe not the coin for you but most of us are certain now just think about that already you know where we are at right now let's let's quickly check we right now are at about 30 cents it's at least 10 times that we're going to do at this point just without any effort so right at this point you're going to need at least hundred thousand dollars to become a millionaire which is a lot you know most people are not going to be having that however whenever i say thirty dollars per xrp nobody's like man that can't happen so we can already deduct another 10 times that which means you'll have ten thousand dollars that you need to become a millionaire is that so strange um, i'm gonna say no i'm gonna say that a lot of people if they really really wanted to are able to invest ten thousand dollars in crypto over the next i don't know time period if they were to believe in it fully and i'm not going to tell you guys to do that please guys please 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 don't invest more than you're able to lose this is not financial advice and even i uh, am not investing all the money i have into crypto just because you got to be sure you are taking care of your financial situation and not acting careless by investing 
everything you can in crypto because it is volatile, it is scary, it's new, and all of that. I'm just saying that to make sure people don't lose their money by just putting it all in and, and something happening, right? Or even them getting hacked and things like that. Just to make sure that that's out of the way, I'm going to say that $10,000 in XRP could actually really easily make you a millionaire already. Now, it just depends on where you think it can go. If you think it can go to $100, you're going to need you know $3,000 right now to get there which I think is going to be really, really possible for almost anybody in the crypto space if they really, really wanted to. But again, sometimes it will take a couple of months to save it up. Sometimes it will take a little bit of persistence to really put it into crypto. Because I'm going to say that most people right now that are watching these videos have only got like $1,000, if not less, invested in crypto. Maybe even only $100. And that is partially because they're not really sure enough to buy into crypto. And partially because most likely this is something they are doing on the side. They're just working their 9 to 5. And they're trying to invest some, some other, other stuff, you know, on the side a little bit. But I'm going to say they're just... If you're watching and you hate this, I'm sorry, but it's the truth. If you only got 100 XRP or maybe you only got 30 or maybe you're thinking about buying uh, you know, $50 worth of crypto, you're most likely not going to get that rich unless the whole standard gets like adopted. You know, Unless it becomes really the standard with like the, the, the quote-unquote true value like those billionaires said and all of that. If not, you're not really going to get that rich off of just that small little investment. So don't expect it, all right? Some guys in the comments say, man, I have 100 XRP, is that enough? I believe it was 143. No, you know, if you really want to get very, very far with it, it's not going to be that much money. Now, is it enough if you only have that to spend? Well, yes, of course, because you got to always look at your own situation, but then don't expect to make, you know, billions of dollars with just that small amount. That's just something to bust your, yourself a little bit to make sure you're not thinking unrealistically. And even $10,000 per coin, guys, is very, 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 very positive Chance of occurring, I'm going to say 0.01%, uh, but still, it's something you can all hope for because it will be so amazing, and 0.01% is still higher than lottery, so from that perspective, maybe hope for it, but the chance of happening is very, very small, and uh, you know the World Bank and everything knows that XRP is a good option for world reserve currency. Brad Gongli has hinted now that you know the US dollar eventually is losing its faith. I've explained to you guys multiple times why I think that XRP is the next one to go. Brad Gongli has knows. Um, the World Bank, they know Ripple's technology, they know it's good. G20, G7, G30, everything knows, everybody knows, we all know. It's just a matter of time before everybody hops on, everything gets settled. But guys, that was it for this video. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you press the like button and subscribe. And I will definitely see you guys again in another crypto video. Take care, everybody, and have a very, very nice day.